Hi, welcome to Obsolete, the show where old technology goes to live. I'm Famicoman, and uh, I've got a pretty exciting episode for you today. You probably noticed for the past couple of months that I haven't been really producing much content. I've been really busy with school, but as of today, I don't have any more finals or class for a couple of weeks, so I can definitely get some more content out. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go on to the first segment, which is CEDs Part 2. Now you may remember that I talked about CEDs. Well that was about six or seven months ago. Now I have a few more CED related items. For example I have some more advanced players, a couple of standard players, as well as a bunch of discs. Let's start with the standard players. This right here is an early Zenith player. You have a couple of cool things on the front. Uh, over here, there's an indicator for which side of the disc you're on, as well as the time. Then there's the rapid access buttons here for reverse and forward. These are similar to uh, skipping chapters on a DVD. You also have the visual search buttons where you can go reverse or forward. This is uh, like fast forward. You also have a pause button. And now here is your selector here. It's currently in the off position. And then we can go and load a disc and then flip it up to play a disc. Now if we look around back we can see that this is a model VP2000. And if we tilt it a bit we can see that there's a channel switch to choose between channel 4 and channel 3. There's an antenna input for your cable or your antenna and there's also a uh, out to TV so you can get this into your TV. So this is very similar to what VCRs are like. Something cool on the top of the unit is that it gives you access to the needle. You just undo this drawer, and you can see right here is the needle assembly. You can see a bit of the turntable down under there, too. And this is used if you need to replace the needle or do any sort of maintenance to it. Even if you didn't know what you're doing, the player comes with this cool manual. It shows you all about the features, accessories, how to replace the needle, the components of the system, and a bunch more information for wiring and stuff like that. So now that we know what we're dealing with, let me get this absurdly long cable and try to hook it up. So now that the CD player is hooked up to the TV, we can see that we currently have static on the screen. Let's try flipping the player to the load position. Now immediately you can see that the television screen has turned black. So now we need to choose a disc that we can use to test out the system. Let's see. Nah, not that one. Here's a couple that have been actually ruined by the player, so we don't want any of these. Guess we can give it a try with this one. So now that we're in the load position, I can just take my disc. And as you can see, the disc is no longer in the caddy. Now all I have to do is flip the switch over to play. And it starts to make a nice noise. Then we just look over at the screen. Now, unfortunately with this player, the uh, needle doesn't always align with the groove right away. So... I have to manually use the buttons on the front to move forward a bit before we can get any actual picture. And there we go, the video plays. Now as you can see there's a little bit of uh, distortion, it looks kind of like a scan line. That's caused by the fact that the belt is a little bit worn out and should probably be realigned or replaced. To then get the disc out of the player, I flip the switch down to load again. 
and that turns off the movie and then I get the caddy back push it in and then pull it out and the disc is back in the caddy so now that you've seen that player you probably want to look at my other players too so let's take a look at this early RCA model from the front you can already tell that it's pretty similar to the Zenith and I'd love to show this one off to you but there's one problem if you open the compartment on the top you see the usual needle assembly right but then if you go to open it it's empty someone took the needle out so I can't use this player so now you're probably asking yourself why don't you just use the needle from the first player or why don't you use it from any of the other players that you saw well here's the thing the problem with these players is that they all seem to use like a different type of needle so if you have one player you can't really switch out parts for another player unless they're very similar models and where am I gonna get you know replacement needles I have to find a whole other player in hope that this one has a working needle so what if I go on eBay and I buy another player and it doesn't have a needle in it either I mean you can't really win and where are you gonna find replacement needles it's not like you know there's a whole surplus of them out there that pop up on eBay all the time these things are basically unheard of okay so moving on to some of their later models here's an RCA SJT 100 now this looks pretty good I mean it's nice sleek design it's black and silver and I mean you still have all your basic functions you still have your visual search your rapid access pause play here's a reject button shouldn't it be like an eject button I don't know why they have the R in there and then there's the power button your side one and two are now with the little light over here and then where you are in the movie comes up on that little display now you want to know what the problem with this thing is it doesn't turn on I got this and I got another player and a whole bunch of discs at an estate sale and they said that everything worked and this player didn't work I mean you know I try hitting the power button nothing it just stays dead so right here we have the SJT200, which is a whole 100 up from the last player. Now, something about this player that's interesting is that it is the first stereo video disc player. So you can have all your video discs in stereo. Now the controls on the front look pretty similar, except there's a couple new buttons and a couple new displays. For example, on the left over here, you have the audio AB button. Now I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. Um, I guess if you're switching back and forth between audio, maybe there's like commentary on one part and there's a uh, regular audio on another part. That was common in a couple of the early laser discs where one channel would be standard audio and the other would be commentary. Now up here in this corner we also have audio indicators for if you have A audio, B audio, and then there's a stereo indicator. So I guess it can detect if your discs are stereo or if you want to choose between one of the tracks. So when we come around to the back, we see that we have the normal antenna in, antenna out, and the channel switch. But we also have something cool. We have RCA jacks. So now we have a video out, and we have left and right audio out. So now what this means is I can use one of these instead of one of these. 